Uh, this is the real Tom Rose, and uh, in order to solve this problem, the first thing you need to understand is the definition of a log. Right, so this is, uh, you can't figure this out, you have to just know. The definition of a log um, is, let's say, log has a, the notation for a log is you have a base. Um, I'll say x, let's call this is log base x of y. Usually the, the inside thing is put in parentheses, but it doesn't have to be written that way. That is equal to uh, some number z. Okay, so if you let's say you're presented with this log base x of y equals z. What also must be true is that y equals x to the z power. These are two different notations for the exact same thing, right? If you're given the left one, you can convert it into the right one. If you have the right one, you can convert it into the left one. That's the whole purpose of logs. And you, the reason why logs were invented is to allow people to solve. Suppose you, suppose you knew y and you knew x, uh, but you wanted to know z. Well, once you have that, a variable in the exponent, it becomes very difficult to solve for. And people wanted to solve for z for whatever reason. So logs were invented so that you can plug in x and y. You can look that up on a table, and then it'll give you the answer z. That's the whole point of it. So you need to, but you don't need to know the history of log. What you need to know is, um, if I have a log, you need to be able to convert that into the, uh, the regular equation equivalent and vice versa. So that's just the definition of log. So we're going to apply that here and let's rewrite this. All right, so take the base B, raise it to the negative 2 power. So B to the negative 2 and that should equal um, what was in the parentheses for that log. So 120, 1 over 25 is b to the negative 2. Now this is just an algebra problem, right? So let's uh, get rid of that negative exponent. Remember that um, a negative exponent can also be, um, can be neutralized by writing a fraction for the, uh, the same exponent, except you get rid of the sign. So b of negative 2, b to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over b squared. And now we can take the square root of both sides and we have two perfect squares here so 1 over 25 is a perfect square that is uh, 1 over 5 1 over b squared is a perfect square that's 1 over b so you can see that 5 equals b which is the fifth answer choice